or good morning uh, to you, depending on your uh, where you are located. Um, today, we'll be presenting on, on winning with global um, hyper stores. My name's my name's David Gray. Um, I'm a senior retail analyst at uh, Edge by Essential. Just before we start, uh, you, you may notice that we have some new branding here today. Uh, we're very excited to announce that Planet Retail R&G and its sister organizations, Brandview, Clavis Insight, and also One Click Retail have merged um, into our new branding. So we're now known as Edge and um, by Essential. In terms of this journey, it really started in 2015 uh, when Essential um, acquired um, Retail Net Group and integrated this with Planet Retail to give us Planet Retail r and In 2016, um, we acquired One Click Retail, the leading provider of sales and share data for Amazon. Uh, 2017, acquired Clavis Insight, one of the uh, leading digital shelf monitoring tools. And of course, uh, most recently in 2018, we acquired Brandview, a digital shelf oriented uh, company, particularly strong um, in price and uh, promotional uh, analytics. So we now have these four brands, which we're really bringing together under the parent umbrella of um, Edge by Essential. And we just wanted to give you an idea of where the products were and where they're heading. Um, each individual company and platform is now under the edge umbrella and offering a really unique and comprehensive retail and e-commerce data sets and insights um, one click retail retail will be uh, is powering the edge market share tool clavis insights will be powering the edge digital shelf brand view will power price and promotions by edge and retail insights will be powered uh, by uh, formerly uh, Planet Retail at R and G. So with that all uh, out of the way, uh, I wanted to give you an idea of what we'll be talking about today in terms of global hyper stores. I wanted to really start off by giving you an, an idea of the context. Um, you know, we know that we're in a situation where a lot of global hyper stores are quite challenged, particularly um, in some developed markets like Western Europe. So I wanted to give you some context in terms of what's going on there. Then we're going to look at the changing landscape by looking at some hyper store developments. So we're going to look at the initiatives, the um, strategic changes hyper stores are implementing um, uh, uh, over the uh, uh, at the moment. And we're going to then look at winning brand strategies as to how brands are adapting their businesses um, to align and win with these hyperstore operators. And then of course, uh, we'll also have a, a summary and a Q&A session uh, at the end. So global hyperstores in context. What I, what I really wanted to do is give you a sense of the, the, the situation, the evolution of the hyperstore format. What we can see here that uh, is, is really that hyperstores are losing share globally uh, due to structural challenges. Here we've got the share of food retail sales by channel um, in percentage terms. And the green area you can see is the hyperstores channel, um, which we can see we, has been shrinking since 2008, dropping from 23.6% of um, global food retail sales in 2008, down to 21.3% uh, in 2013 to 19.4% and then further declines through to 2023. So I think on the face of it, you know, this is a, cha a channel that um, is facing some structural challenges. And, and looking at this data, it's a channel uh, that is in decline. And I think one of the, you know, the big reason for this decline is the growth of some other channels. So growth in terms of um, uh, the smaller formats, uh, the convenience formats, and also um, growth in terms of uh, the online channel and online retail. So we've looked at the global picture. We, you know, we've seen that globally uh, hypermarket share of food retail sales is in decline, um, and we're forecasting that to continue to decline. But we can really see here that um, 
hypermarkets are really a, a, a Western European and North American invention. And it's in these markets where hyper stores are most developed, where we're seeing um, the largest falls in hyper store share. If you look to North America, uh, we can see um, hyper store share of food retail sales. We're forecasting it to drop from 70% in 2018 to 63.6% in 2023. Similar picture for Europe, um, uh, dropping from 24.4 uh, to 22.6. So it's really a picture of you know, where hyperstores have been most successful. They're, they're really a much larger part of the market. Uh, we're forecasting uh, some quite, um, uh, quite steep falls in terms of their share of food uh, retail sales. But I wanted to give you a sense that, you know, yes, hyperstores are challenged. We're seeing hyperstores lose share uh, on a global basis and also in some key regions. But the channel is still enormously important. It still generates, um, you know, an enormous uh, value in terms of sales. And I think this chart really gives you a feel for that. We can see the top 10 hyperstore operators. You can see a, a retailer like Walmart in 2018 generated in hyperstore sales almost uh, 400 billion um, dollars uh, so we can see really that this is still uh, you know a, a major very very large significant and important channel we can also see from this chart you know it really reinforces the point that hyperstores are a european and north american invention um, with only one operator aeon uh, coming in into this top 10 being from asia from outside north america uh, and Europe. So, so what is this? We've looked at the data. We, we've seen the channel, uh, you know, is facing some structural challenges. What does this actually mean for hyperstore operators themselves? How are they uh, re responding? What we've done is we've 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 looked at the the, the key hyperstore uh, developments and initiatives across each of these four winning strategies. So, looking at how hyperstores are adapting. Um, uh, their stores around the store of the future, how they're winning in e-commerce and, and, and digital ecosystems, what they're doing in terms of supply chain, uh, and then uh, how they're really engaging and retaining their shoppers. So the first point I wanted to make was around the, uh, the, the, the store of the future, the changing role of the, of, of the hypermarket, the actual hypermarket physical store. What we're seeing is that increasingly hyperstore operators are looking to drive customer experience. And often they're doing this um, through shopping shops, through um, often actually subletting space, subletting uh, store space to third party retailers, or sometimes even um, offering space to some of the other retail brands within their, um, within their portfolio. We've got some good examples uh, here. We got Carrefour very recently um, announced uh, the partnership with uh, Media Markt in Poland. Um, so Media Markt will be taking uh, space in some of Carrefour's hypermarkets. You've got Carrefour in France working with Darty. So Darty concessions are opening in some of those uh, Carrefour hypermarkets. If we come across to the UK um, and we look at Tesco, um, you've got Tesco, which is obviously acquired Booker, the, the large cash and carry business. We've got Tesco opening some of those fashions, some of those Booker um, retail brands within Tesco stores. So effectively um, offering space at hypermarkets to some um, uh, existing banners or fashions within its own um, uh, portfolio. So this is one of the ways that, you know, hyperstore operators are really rethinking um, their stores and, and thinking about how they deal with some of these overspace um, issues that they have. Another important element around the future of the store is, is driving differentiation through product um, curation. Really, really important to uh, you know, work on merchandising, on product curation. I think a really strong example we've had recently is Carrefour, which is uh, you know, curating organic products in a dedicated area of its Chambosi um, hyperstore with the launch of what it's calling Bio Experience Zones. So these are um, 
actually quite large 550 square meter zone featuring six key areas more than 3,800 products are on sale and it's really got a recognizable visual identity the customer really knows when they're um, in uh, actually enter into these beer bio experience zone uh, areas and this is really part of uh, Carrefour's strategy to, to target 5 billion in organic product sales by 2022 and also for one third of sales to be private label by 2022. And there's obviously other examples uh, uh, too. You've got uh, the likes, for example, of um, Carrefour uh, trialing discount zones or, or curating products in discount corners in some of its hyper stores. You've even got Casino um, in France um, uh, opening some of the leader price discount fashions uh, in, in, in corners in some of its giant uh, hyper stores uh, as well. And another really important element or area hyperstores are working on is around um, hyperstores really being social destinations through food service. A lot of retailers have been working on, on this. This is an example from Alibaba, but it's not just Alibaba. Uh, you could look, for example, in Poland, the Carrefour um, Pro Store, where there's a big focus, uh, there's a big new food service um, offer. But this is an interesting example from Alibaba. This is one of their, their HEMA location in Shanghai, uh, where they've actually opened a, uh, a, a robot restaurant. Um, the, the, the restaurant allows shoppers to order food via electronic touch points and pay via the HEMA app. HEMA workers send fresh ingredients from the store to the kitchen via conveyor belts, where orders are prepared um, by uh, chefs. So really interesting take here on, on how to bring a food service concept to customers. In this instance, Alibaba is working to, to, to really deliver a, an automated uh, type experience for consumers. But the big picture is that you know, in the future, we will see more hyperstore operators moving to um, offer a stronger food service proposition uh, within their stores. You know, as we know, this, this will um, drive footfall to store it drives dwell time which can have a positive impact um, on sales and also from a supplier perspective um, food service concepts often provide new waiting points in store um, leading to opportunities for related uh, product placements adjacent to uh, these um, these new food service concepts And I wanted to talk about what hypermarket operators are doing in terms of um, e-commerce and digital ecosystems. Uh, I've got sort of three main slides, three main messages here. Uh, the first area I think they're really focusing on is seeking technology partnerships to drive digital capability. Um, we've got an example here of Carrefour working with Google. It's by no means the only example. Uh, we have seen um, Walmart partnering with Microsoft um, earlier this year. So there are now a number of hyperstore retailers um, looking to uh, seeking out these technology partnerships. I just want to give you a feel for the details behind the deal. Uh, you know, Carrefour and Google have signed this partnership that's seen that will see grocery available via a dedicated site on Google France, as well as through the search giants, connected speakers and voice enabled devices. The two partners are also working uh, to open a Paris innovation lab uh, with Google Cloud to research AI uh, that can be used um, uh, in consumer services. So a big, big trend we, we're starting to see is these hyper stores seeking out um, uh, technology partnerships to really drive their, their capabilities in terms of their e-commerce uh, offer. But I don't think I don't think you know I don't think it's only partnerships that are important. I think that retailers mustn't neglect um, you know their their existing portals. Uh, they need to focus on continually um, improving and redeveloping their uh, existing portals. And I think that uh, Walmart, uh, you know, has, has, has done a major initiative in this area uh, earlier this year. I think it was June or July, earlier in the summer, launching a major refresh of its um, Walmart uh, portal, uh, relaunching its website, its mobile app with a new look 
and you feel greater personalization and also the introduction of spe specialty shopping experiences uh, which vary by category the first of these um these sort of fashion experiences or destinations uh, included the lord and taylor uh, flagship uh, store so walmart really working and investing in in, in platform uh, development and evolution but i think in addition um hyper store operators are seeking acquisitions um uh, to build their ecosystems to build their capabilities um in the online space i think probably one of the leaders in this area or, or one of the most proactive retailers in terms of online acquisitions has been walmart obviously acquiring flipkart in india um, but also um, a number of e-commerce non-food acquisitions have been made in recent years the likes of moose jaw bonobos mod cloth and, and and the list uh, goes on but i wanted to bring you back to europe for uh, um an initiative an acquisition from car four uh, so you know car four is also now under the the leadership of uh, its new ceo is really pushing forward with omni channel with digital and has been focusing on um often acquisitions uh, to help uh, achieve this objective. And earlier this year, it acquired a controlling stake in Quitok, uh, which is a, a meal, a leading meal kits provider in France. Quitok um, delivered uh, around 3 million meals throughout France in 2017, and it offers a weekly changing menu featuring local, seasonal, um, and um, organic, organic ingredients. So I think the message here is really that um, retailers hyperstore operators are increasingly actively seeking acquisitions to enhance their um, online propositions their online capabilities carrefour and walmart really leading the charge uh, in this area i wanted to, to now talk about supply chain and fulfillment um, there's a couple of slides in here i think come under the same theme which is the increasing um, use of hyper stores, physical assets to support online fulfillment, um, whether that be for home delivery or for collection. I think what we've been seeing um, is an increasing attempt by retailers to bring more automation um, to these hyper stores that are supporting online fulfillment. And a really good example recently is this uh, Walmart's efforts in North America. Um, in a super center where it's introduced this Alphabot robot, Alphabot technology, um, which um, effectively brings um, orders to a, a picker. Um, so the, instead of the picker walking around a store picking products, the products are delivered to the picker. Uh, um, and this, this drives, um, drives efficiency. So very, very interesting uh, concept there uh, from uh, Walmart. In the same sort of theme, really, in terms of um, pickup, um, we've got greater use of automation in online grocery and non-food uh, pickup. Walmart on the left here, Walmart has been testing an automated kiosk um, at a super center, which really allows customers to pick up online grocery orders without the need to interact with um, an employee. And orders are packed by Walmart employees before being placed um, in the kiosks. So very, very, uh, fast process to retrieve the order uh, the order is retrieved within one minute by scanning a barcode um, so that's a very very interesting uh, concept there and of course also walmart has been experimenting with these pickup towers for the non-food orders that are collected in store so the message here really is hyper stores are increasingly supporting online fulfillment that includes online collection so collection of online orders but also um Hyper stores are supporting home delivery uh, as well. And another another uh, area of focus in terms of supply chain and fulfillment has been around buying alliances. I think that we are seeing, uh, you know, the proliferation of buying alliances, particularly in Europe. Um, you know, this is an example of Tesco Car4. There are a number of other examples. It's the Horizon buying alliance between. Metro and Deer. There's also Carrefour that's partnered with uh, a system U in a buying alliance. Uh, but this is really one of the biggest alliances we've seen for some time, this alliance between Tesco uh, and Carrefour. 
what are the key facts? What do we know? Um, it's a three-year uh, deal um, announced earlier this year. It was operational from October. Uh, So-called clean teams have been established between the two companies. Uh, excludes markets where Carrefour and Tesco compete, such as Poland and China. And it includes the joint purchasing on private labels and goods not for resale, and also strategic global supplier relationships. So I think the this is part of a wider trend of an increasing number of retailers seeking out buying alliances uh, to drive efficiency and to drive uh, scale. I think potentially there could be opportunities from this for manufacturers to build broader marketing and promotional campaigns across markets. Uh, so in, in this case, across markets in partnership with Carrefour uh, and uh, Tesco. And then I, I wanted to to look at shopper engagement and retention. So how are hyperstore operators engaging and retaining their customers? One way they're doing this is um, implementation of technology in store that takes friction out of the shopping process. Um, an interesting example here is from Car4 that has uh, deployed a product ge geolocation technology across 45 uh, French hypermarkets. Uh, with more to more to follow um, it's worked with pricier to add this function to its car for in moi uh, mobile application uh, which allows the geolocation of any product accurate to one meter uh, so this is really helping the customer experience customer enters the store can use their phone to direct them to within one meter of the product uh, that they're looking for I think that's particularly important for car for that has a number of extremely large hype markets in France that can be um, upwards or more than 10,000 square meters. Um, uh, so, so that will really um, provide more convenience for our customers. This type of technology could pave the way as well for more personalized communications direct to customer smartphones, um, dependent on their location in the store. If the application knows where the customer is, then potentially there are marketing opportunities, um, uh, marketing communication that can be sent to uh, the customer's phone. And obviously, another key, uh, key, uh, you know, really critical element in terms of shopper engagement and retention is obviously product innovation, uh, product quality. Uh, and I think a lot of retailers have been investing in uh, product innovation in recent years. Uh, there's a good example here from Walmart. It's not just Walmart. A number of retailers have been investing in meal kits. Um, but Walmart has launched a, a range of own brand meal kits across 2,000 stores this year. These meal kits have been developed. Uh, and tested in the retailer's culinary um, innovation center uh, and are made, uh, are made and assembled fresh in store uh, daily. Uh, you know, Walmart is, has also bought in third party meal kits. Uh, so it's not just own brand, they also work with third parties um, as well. So really, really important element in, in shop engagement and retention is could have to continue uh, innovation in terms of product development. I just wanted to spend the next uh, five or, or, or 10 minutes just talking about, we've looked at um, you know, the context that we the hyper stores are in. We've looked at some the direction of travel, some key developments from key hyperstore operators. I want to give you a sense of how brands are responding with some real live uh, case studies. Um, so in terms of you know, how brands are responding to the, the challenge around the store of the future, the challenge around um, you know, hyper stores being overspaced in some cases. Uh, this is an example uh, um, from Bacardi, uh, which uh, last for last Christmas, um, it developed exclusive shopping shops at two car for hyper stores in Nice. The shopping shops offer customers the chance to discover gift ideas featuring Bacardi premium brands such as the Devron, Grey Goose um, uh, and, and others. So this is a really, really good example from a, a you know, a major supplier um, helping to take some excess store space from car four and, and in a way that really drives customer experience uh, uh, in that store. And I think, 
you know, suppliers are also aiding hyperstores in terms of product curation. This is an example from the US. So, so Quip, um, a toothbrush manufacturer, is now offering its electric toothbrush exclusively in Target stores. Uh, so Target was the first retailer to stop the product. Uh, you know, this offering exclusivity um, yeah, really helps a retailer in terms of curation, in terms of offering uh, that uh, differentiation. And retailers are supporting, uh, sorry, suppliers are, are supporting retailers in bringing new technologies like augmented reality to hyper stores. This is an example of a, um, a digital solution that allows customers to digitally try on makeup in Walmart stores. Um, so the customers can see how they might look with the makeup on before making a purchase, really driving the uh, in-store um, experience. And moving on to look at um, e-commerce, um, obviously we're, you know, we're seeing uh, the development and the, the strong growth of mobile commerce. So increasingly consumers are choosing to shop via their mobiles. And so it's becoming increasingly important uh, to uh, you know, adapt um, images and your offer specifically uh, for the mobile shopper. And you know, this is an example from Unilever that's created mobile optimized hero images with simplified product photos that make it easier to identify brand, product type, and size. Uh, so this is um, on the uh, walmart.com um, mobile application uh, in the US. And I think suppliers are also um, integrating augmented reality technology into hyperstore online operations. It's an example from Coty. So Coty owned brand CoverGirl has developed a, a mobile web try on experience, that effectively lets customers test out new looks using augmented reality, either on their mobile device or on their desktop um, computer. And Coty has an exclusive arrangement with Walmart to sell the CoverGirl products by linking to walmart.com. Effectively, the customer goes onto the CoverGirl uh, uh, website, selects a product, um, the mobile application or the webcam through the computer will show them a visualization of how they might look, and then they can link through to Walmart to make uh, the uh, purchase. And in terms of engagement and retention, uh, you know, promotions are still really, really um, important, and suppliers need to continue innovating in their promotional strategies. This is an example from Unilever and promotional specialist Smiley World, which partnered on a campaign which saw um, 100,000 Smiley World mugs distributed to car sh shoppers across Europe who spent uh, 15 euros or more across a range of Unilever products. The message here really is, um, you know, in summary, spend 15 euros on Unilever products and you receive, the customer receives a Smiley World mug. And this was available in a, in a number of car for hype markets uh, across Europe. So I just wanted to, to, to move on now to, to sort of summarize some of the key key learnings here and also talk about some, some recommendations and potentially move on to Q&A uh, if we have time. So in summary, first of all, talking about you know, the story of the future, we, we've seen that retailers are increasingly uh, focusing on customer experience through shopping shops. We saw Carrefour working with Media Mart, working with Darty in France. We've seen Tesco with Booker, really driving the experience through, through uh, some of those shopping shops. We've seen hyper stores driving differentiation through product curation. Uh, we saw the example of, of Carrefour, the Chambourcy um, organic, the Chambourcy uh, um, organic product zones in the Chambourcy hypermarket. And we looked also about making stores uh, social destinations through food service. Um, we talked about the uh, robot restaurant from HEMA, uh, the HEMA store, but there are other, other examples uh, in Europe as well. In terms of e-commerce and digital ecosystems, it's really about seeking and establishing technology partnerships. Uh, Carrefour working with Google, Walmart working with Microsoft. It's about investing in platform, platform development, uh, you know, Walmart's major relaunch this year uh, of its US operations. 
and also really building and expanding the ecosystem through acquisitions. Uh, you know, we've seen uh, Carrefour uh, making this acquisition of this meal kits provider at Quitoc. In terms of supply chain and fulfillment, you know, it's about uh, retail is increasingly using their hyper stores to support online fulfillment in terms of um, home delivery, in terms of pickup, but also increasingly automating this pro process to reduce costs and try to drive margins. And in addition, uh, you know, retailers, hyper stores are seeking buying alliances to drive efficiency and scale. We mentioned a number um, in earlier slides. In terms of shopper engagement and retention, it's really about the use of technology. How can I use technology uh, uh, to aid the customer experience to take friction out of the shopping uh, trip? And also it's about product innovation uh, to drive uh, customer um, engagement. I just wanted to, before we close and move to questions, I just wanted to say that um, we do in the full report for all those that are customers, have um, uh, offered detailed recommendations by winning strategy, uh, detailed here, and also by CPG sector. So please do log on to the um, Edge Retail Insights portal to, uh, to uh, download a copy of the full report. And also if interested in learning more about the additional capabilities Edge by Essential can offer your organization, uh, please do contact your account manager uh, today. So we do, we have had a few questions come in. We do have um, a few minutes left uh, for, uh, for a few questions. Um, so we, we've got one just come in now. Um, so someone's asking, despite their decline, do you believe hyperstores will remain important to global brands um, and suppliers? Yeah, I, I, I think the answer is absolutely. I think that uh, hyperstores are still a, is still a massive channel. I mean, I sh we showed that chart at the beginning of the presentation showing share of food retail sales declining. But actually, overall, the channel will continue to grow. It'll just grow more slowly than some other channels, uh, online uh, convenience. So there's still a big opportunity um, uh, you know, working with some of those uh, hyper stores. Another another question just come in. Um, yeah, what, someone's asking on the line. Uh, you know, what's your opinion on moves to use hyper stores to facilitate um, pickup of um, online orders? Yeah, I'm. I mean, I think it. I think to be honest, it makes uh, logical sense to use hyperstore assets to support online operations. I don't think you need to, you know, limit that to pick up. You can use hyperstores to support um, home delivery services and also uh, pick up services um, as well. I think the great uh, pick up um, is you can potentially drive more traffic, more customers um, to your stores. I think as, as we talked about in the presentation, there's been a big move around um, automated solutions. So likes of Walmart um, using this robot at a, at a super center. So really using some automation uh, to reduce costs. We've got a question here around uh, food service. Uh, someone's asking, you know, what, why, what's the drive of being forced behind food service uh, becoming more important? To operators I think there's a, yeah I, mean, I, I think there's a few points at play here really um, I think it's a good way potentially to use some excess store space so we some of these hyper stores sort of over 10,000 square meters um, they're, they're slightly over space so you could put in a, a food service offer to take some of that store space but I think in addition, uh, food service can obviously drive footfall to store. But I think more importantly, it drives dwell time. So, you know, when you have a food service offer, um, customers tend to spend longer in the store and that can, um, uh, you know, have a positive impact uh, upon uh, uh, store sales. So I think uh, that's... Uh, 
all we, we we have time for today. So I'd really just like to take this opportunity to to thank everyone um, on the line who, who joined today's webinar. Um, if you do uh, have any questions about any of our uh, products and services, please do uh, reach out to your uh, account manager, uh, who I'm sure will be uh, happy to help. Um, and uh, so thank you very much and, and do enjoy the, the rest of the day.